God has blessed us with another day. Hallelujah. Uh, I've been able to come to His house and to worship and praise. Um, most importantly for us to learn the Holy Word of God, uh, be in the fellowship with one another. Uh, we're going to continue on the spirit of infirmity. I know Randall gave you the scripture because I will be uh, starting in... I gave it to him. I can't find it myself. <laughs> okay, I see it now. <laughs> we, uh, you got the glasses? Huh? I said, you'll cipher in a minute. Yeah, I did. It took me a hot minute. So, we've been teaching on the spirits. Um, and we're doing the spirit of infirmity right now. And I. You know, I was talking to a lot of people in here this morning. There's a lot of people having a lot of medical issues right now. Um, I'm having a medical issue, which I've not disclosed to anybody. Um, but then Dennis has been having some medical issues. Mike is in the hospital today. Was that diabetes he's got, you said? And uh, he's got an infection in his foot. Um, before Ken and them went back home, they're both down in their backs. I mean, don't think that you can't be delivered from that. Because you can. The devil doesn't want you here. The devil doesn't want you to know what it is that you're up against. Because if, if you know what you're up against, then you can rebuke that and get it out of your life. Amen. You can have deliverance. Amen. God has promised that to us in this Bible. All you have to do is believe and have faith in God. But I made the comment when I was back there in the back, I said, baby, I need to quit teaching on this because everybody's getting hurt and sick and down. And, and I was like, no, no, you don't stop. Well, no, I, we're not going to stop. It just means you're being tested. And now, guess what? With the new knowledge you've got, you can handle it. That's right. And you can get rid of it. It don't matter what the devil throws at us. When we've got the information from this holy word of God, then we can stand up against anything that he can throw at us. Amen. Um, Y'all missed a really good Sunday school lesson this morning with Miss Jerry. Yes. Um, and, and that lesson was about ungodly soul ties, uh, which will also work, some of working hand in hand with some of these spirits that I'm teaching, or the Holy Word of God is teaching you about. But that was a fantastic study she did. Um, so last week we were going through a list of things as why some Christians cannot, don't get healed. And it is because there are certain things. That you, that you still got in your life and that you're still hanging on to and you're walking in disobedience. You can't receive the healing when you've got to get yourself right. Um, and the last, the last verse that I quoted when we did that was Galatians chapter 5, 16 and 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And that verse definitely relates to exactly what she taught this morning. All right? The, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. What things that you need to be doing is getting rid of those things in your life. Yep. If you're going to walk in the flesh, then you're going to start doing things that you're not supposed to be doing. Amen. If you walk in the spirit, at least you've got a fighting chance. And you've got the Holy Spirit of God within you to help you defend yourself of the spirits that are in this world today. So, this opens up the door for the spirit of infirmity. When you have got something going on that you need to take care of between you and God. We've all got our weaknesses. We all fall short. And it's a daily battle. It's a daily battle. But thank God that He gives us the strength to get up and face it each and every day. Um, you know, we as a church, and personally, you know, we can pray for you of the things that you're wanting to be healed about. We've been talking about all the infirmities, but today we're going to do a little bit of talking how God can heal us. Come on. And we can pray for you all you want us to pray for you, but you still have to do your part. Yes, there are conditions in this Bible that you have to meet in order to receive that healing. Amen. You're not going to walk in disobedience to God Every day, knowing what you're doing is doing is wrong, and then plus unrepentant sins. That will keep you from being healed. God's promises are conditional, and when we walk in obedience, He keeps His promises. Yes. I forgot my water again. Thank you. <clears throat> I 
So today, we're going to talk about how God heals and how what the tools are that we have to stand up against the spirit of infirmities and get rid of them and get them out of your life. But I'm going to tell you right now, the, one, the two words that come up in this lesson each and every time, it is faith and it is to believe. Amen. If you don't believe, then you are not going to receive. Amen. You have to believe. You have to have faith in it. Uh, a lot of people think that, that all this stuff is uh, fairy tales and, and it's just some storybook and this, that, and the other, but it's not. It is instruction manual for me and you while we are walking this earth so that we can make it and survive it and go into the eternity with God. Can I get an amen? Amen. God does not wish for any of His children to suffer. Even though some people think that He does. He does not. So, I'm going to start quoting some scripture here then before we get into Corinthians. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Is any among you sick? Or is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil. Now some of y'all have received the anointing of the oil when you have come up to this altar. Okay, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save thee sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. There's a benefit to coming up to the altar. It is your friend. And the Holy Spirit put, put that on me one day. It is your friend. A lot of people will come up here, I don't know if you're embarrassed or what, but by God, I wouldn't be too embarrassed if I thought I could come up here and get a prayer at the altar of God and be anointed with the oil and get rid of the infirmity that you're suffering today. Amen. So forget what people think or you afraid that people will see you walk up here. Man, this is a great place to place your problems on this altar and pray for it and do anointing. So this is the first step. What it says is call the elders of the church and let them pray on, over you and anoint you with the oil. You have to make the step to say, yes, I want to receive this. It's okay for you to come up here. We can pray. You can have deliverance and get rid of those infirmities that are in your life today. Do you believe? Yes. Do you have faith? Yes. Then what are you waiting on? Let's get rid of it. Amen. Number two. I'm sorry, I had this numbered over here. Uh, agreement. Matthew chapter 8, verse 19 and 20. I knew it. I got my card messed up. There it is. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For two or three are gathered together in my name, and there am I in the midst of them. Amen. So, what does that mean? So, you come up here, and you want to be prayed for, and you want to be anointed for the infirmity that is in your life, and then you have somebody else come up here to pray as well for that person. And that's what we should be doing all the time. That doesn't always happen, and sometimes it does. What is the agreement? The person that comes up to lay hands on you along with myself must be in agreement. What we are specifically praying about. It's not going to work if I'm praying for this and the other person is praying for that. You have to be in agreement with one another. And the person being prayed for. We also have to be in agreement for what you're wanting to be prayed for. Do you believe? Do you have faith? So, if God's Word says it, then we need to do it. So, you know, you see me up here praying for somebody and you feel led by the Holy Spirit to walk up here and lay hands on them, find out what the agreement is what we're praying for. That's the way we need to do it. Alright, the next one is, I just said it, laying on of hands. Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So what did Jesus Christ say? He said, any who would believe. Healthy believers should have those signs follow them. The world is crying out 
today for this healing. They just don't know how to get it. They don't know that there's evil spirits and devils and demons running above. They, uh, you would think they would if you see how evil this world is today. So, you come up. You call the elders of the church. You get prayed for. You get anointed. You get hands laid on you. And then we can rebuke that infirmity out of your life. And you say, I pray in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ, I rebuke thee. Go back through the abyss from whence you came. Yes. They have to obey the power and blood of Jesus Christ. And now you've got two believers that love the Lord laying hands. And then you take that oil and you anoint them with it. Now the oil does not do the healing. The oil is our obedience to God. It says to use it. The oil in the Hebrew means El A Yah, which is God, and then Yah is God's sacred name in the oil of His people right in the middle. In the Greek text, it's Christo, which means the anointed one. Who is that? It's Jesus Christ. So this is what the oil is symbolic of, and this is what He uh, wants us to do when we're praying for people. All right, so now we're going to do uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 11. <clears throat> All right, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. We have the Holy Spirit of God within us today. Can I get an amen? amen. And what did it say? The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to do what? To profit with all. That means we're supposed to be sharing this information with other people that are lost in the world. This is supposed to be being shared with Christians who aren't being taught the Holy Word of God. With all is what we're supposed to do with that. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Yes. What is your spiritual gift? Do you know what it is? You have to pray for it. Now sometimes God will naturally just give you that gift and then hopefully you recognize it is from God above because without God you are nothing. Without God we have no power or authority over the enemy. That's right. That's right. That's right. For the given to the Spirit of the word of wisdom and to another the knowledge by the same Spirit. Right. It's the same Spirit, but it's two different gifts. So the Spirit of the, the Word of Knowledge is a, is a fantastic gift that should be shared with the world. Yes, why? Because the knowledge of this Bible. That's why. Because you can go out and share the Gospel of Jesus Christ. You can go out and preach and you can anoint and you can rebuke and you can help people. Yes. Amen. To anoint faith by the same Spirit I have met some people in this walk and this journey that have, I mean, faith. That is also a gift. To have profound faith. And the gift of healing by the same Spirit. Yes. That is another gift. A gift of healing. Amen. Now if you're being taught how to pray over somebody and how to anoint them and how to lay hands on them. <laughs> And God's Word promises that if you are walking in obedience to Him, you will receive that healing. Sometimes you might get it right away, and other times it might take a while. It's, it's God's time. That's exactly right. Amen. It's in God's timing. It's not in our timing. Amen. To another, the working of miracles. Yes. I have people tell me all the time, well, we don't see miracles no more. I'd say, well, you must be blind as bad. I see God's hand, and I see miracles each and every day. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of the spirits. And another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. Now, the word tongues in the Greek, when you translate it, is simply to learn another language other than what you were born with. That's what the word tongues means here. So then, another, the interpretation of tongues. Well, the person, if somebody's got to get up here and do the interpretation, do they not also have to learn another language? So, if I'm sitting here teaching a bunch of uh, uh, Asians in the church, Chinese, Japanese, whatever, and I'm sitting there saying English, well, hey, he's got to know their language to say it to them. 
What a gift. Yes, sir. You ever met somebody that knows how to speak five, six, seven, eight languages? Uh, yeah. Now that is a gift from God. Yes, it <clears throat> but all of these worketh that one in the self same spirit, dividing to every man separately as he will. Yes. Amen. Do you love God? Yes. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Then you ought to love His children. You ought to be praying for a gift. Yes, sir. Right. You say, God, just use me in whatever way I can. Use my abilities, whatever you think I'm capable of. Please, Lord, give me this yes, gift. Yes, sir. And God will give you the gift. But now if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Be careful what you ask for. That's right. Be careful what you ask for. Yes, sir. That's what we're supposed to be doing, folks. Yes. These evil spirits are plaguing our brothers and sisters in the world. And they are holding them in bondage and they don't know how to get out of it. So we as lovers of Christ must teach them. Witness to them. Let the light of God shine through you when you are out in the world. Can I get an amen? amen. <clears throat> Many believe that a believer can pray for them and they will be healed. And like you said, it's in God's timing. My thoughts, Isaiah 55, 8, 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's all in God's timing. You have to have faith, and you have to believe, and you have to have patience. Now some may receive that healing, and some may not receive that healing. There we go back to the conditions that you must meet in the Holy Word of God. <clears throat> God works in His own time and has a plan always for our lives. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. <clears throat> Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you, for everyone that asketh receiveth. As believers, we receive by faith what our Father has promised us in the Holy Word of God. Amen. Which includes divine healing. That's right. You don't think that, right. that God can't get rid of your infirmity? You know, I have people all the time when they get sick and they have cancer and they're being told by their doctors that they're going to die, but guess what? God has the last word. Amen. God has the last word, folks. God can heal it. God can stop it. God can, can make it whole again. So no matter what they say, you can still receive healing. The gifts of healing are usually a sign or a miracle to show the power, the love, and the mercy of God. You ever wonder why you see God heal different people and all that? Why? Why, why does God do it? Well, first of all, He loves you. Right. Second of all, He's doing it for, to show you His power and His glory and His love. How many times did Jesus pass the lame man at the gate of beautiful and did not heal him? Can people be healed that have not been saved? Now I come across that question. Absolutely. God can heal whoever He wants to. Okay? So now we're going to go to Acts. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Acts chapter 3, 1 through 10. Again, we're talking about God's healing. I'm going to read through this scripture and then I'm going to go, then I'm going to go through exactly what, uh, what happened in this situation and why it happened. Verse 3, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of praying, being the ninth hour. A certain man, lame, from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Now it doesn't say how many years or how old he was, 
But from his mother's womb, folks, he was lame. And every day or every week, somebody would carry him and lay him at the gate because he was looking for a handout. Okay? Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked in alms. Verse 4, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. I want you to watch the power of God Amen. in this Scripture. Yes. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. In other words, a handout. He wasn't asking for prayer. He wasn't looking or asking about Jesus Christ. He was asking for a handout. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have a gift, I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whoop and walk. That's right. That's right. No hesitation. No non belief. He did it with conviction. He knew it. And he had faith in God. Yes. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles and bones received strength. Can I get a hallelujah? And can you imagine that old boy all the way from the time he was out of his mother's womb? And then what did he do? And he leaping up, stood and walked and entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat at the alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto him. I'm going to skip to chapter 4. And I'm going to read verse 4. How be it, talking about the same subject here, many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of them were about 5,000. 5,000 people came to salvation. Can I get an amen? amen? So a man was healed. But the only faith that he demonstrated was to receive and all. Did God heal him? Yes. yes, he did. He didn't even ask to be healed, but he God healed him. The onlookers saw what happened and were filled with wonder and amazement. The people rushed there to see when he preached the gospel. He did this miracle and look at the chain reaction of this miracle that he did. And this healing. The result of the healing and hearing the word, 5,000 people were saved and believed on Jesus Christ. The news of the power of Christ spread throughout the region. Our world needs this today. This world needs us to be a shining example. This world needs us to use and apply the Holy Word of God to get out and help people. Free them from bondage. Help them where they can walk into the kingdom of God and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. First Corinthians 14.1 Follow after charity. That's love. I love each and every person in here. And I know each and every person, well, some of you love me. We love you, brother. Thank you. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Yes, sir. Now, we've got a lot of people in here that do have spiritual gifts, whether it be singing or, singing or whether it be uh, playing the instruments or somebody that's teaching or somebody that cooks, somebody that even stays and cleans the church and stuff afterwards. Those are all gifts. Those are all services to God. So desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye might prophesy. We as true believers should be seeking spiritual gifts. Without them, we're just another religion. We ain't no religion. We, we live in reality. Okay? We, we love and serve Jesus Christ. Not a religion. When you believe it, you will receive it. Now if you're going to come up here and you're going to pray, and right you sit in your seat, you're going to come up here and then you're thinking it's walking up here. Well, I just, I, he ain't going, it's not going to heal me. Uh, then you've just wasted your time. Why would you even come up here? Believe. Yes. 
Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I say unto you, whosoever things ye desire when you pray, believe that ye will receive them, and ye shall have them. Amen. Another promise from God. It is understood that whatsoever ye desire when you pray, believe that you will receive includes divine healing. I mean, He healed a man that was lame from the womb of his mother. You don't think He can't cure whatever it is that you've got going on in your life today? Whatever I've got going on in my life today? Do you believe it? If you believe it, you can receive it. <laughs> I believe this is the way a mature Christian in the faith should receive healing. That's right. Man, if you call yourself a Christian, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you must believe and have faith that God will heal you. I've seen so many answered prayers for a lot of you that are sitting out here today. I've seen God heal a lot of you that are sitting out here today, you just have to believe it. Look at Miss Anna still sitting up here after what she went through. Hallelujah. Is that not a miracle? God gives. Is that not is that not faith? Absolutely. In believing that Jesus Christ could heal her? Yes. Aunt Becky also suffered a stroke. She couldn't feel nothing on one side of her body. She couldn't even talk. Look at her today. That's right. If you believe, you can receive. God give. You don't have to, and there's a reason by what I'm fixing to say. The Bible just gave us our instructions about somebody asking for prayer. It must be you. That's you taking the step. Us coming up here, somebody else being with an agreement with you, laying hands on this person and praying for them and anointing them with the oil of God. Amen. So my next question to you is, do you have to have the oil or the agreement to receive the healing? What if nobody's around? Now don't we serve a fair God? Yes, we, we have the capability and the opportunity to do it God's way. But now what if you were by yourself and you got bit on your toe by a coral snake? A coral snake. You have about 10 seconds to either believe and have faith in God or die. Or at the very least, lose a leg. So no, you don't have to have the oil. You don't have to have the agreement. All you have to do is have faith yes. and believe. Because you're not always with other people that can do this for you. Mark 16, 18. They shall take up... Oh, wait a minute. I was about to get ahead of myself. I had read another story of a minister who had been bitten by a black widow. And so she said that when she got bit by the spider, this scripture flashed before her eyes or in her mind. And it says, They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. She suffered no ill effects from that. Not one. Because she had faith and because she believed that God could heal her. She rebuked it in the name of Jesus Christ. It can be done for you today. If you are seeking healing today, it can happen for you. All you have to do is believe. It's a sad fact that so many have slipped so far from the Word they look at as skepticism and unbelief. You hear me say this all the time. And a lot of people say, well, you're awful hard on churches. No, I'm not. God's Word is. God's Word is. You're not, the churches aren't doing their jobs today. We have so many sick Christians and I'm not even talking about necessarily physically, but spiritually sick. Because why? They're not being taught the Word of God. I've been in churches and sat in the pew and, and, and sit there. And of course, we got our music stuff leading up to that. And then a, a preacher stand up here and tell fish stories and tell you about old Aunt Mace Pie when he was nine years old. But that was it. You never opened her Bible. Never 
teach God's Word. Are we wondering why the God's children are so spiritually sick today? Unfortified? Unprepared to fight the spirits that we have to deal with each and every day? We've got to teach them. And with that, can I get an amen? amen. amen. Everybody bow your heads.